So to determine um, the number of possible real um, positive and negative zeros using Descartes' rule of signs, what we need to do is we need to look at one, the positive and, um, I'm sorry, the, the value of the positive x and the negative x and determine the variations of the sign. That's going to help us determine the number of positive or negative real zeros. So this is the positive form. The next thing we want to be able to figure out then is what about if I evaluate in for negative x? So therefore, you evaluate in for negative x, which would be negative x to the fourth minus 2 times negative x cubed minus negative x squared. All right? So we're going to evaluate uh, 8x. Yeah, negative minus 8 negative x. All right? OK, so we, we look for this. This is going to tell us the number of positive real zeros. And this will tell us the number of negative real zeros. All right? So now what we need to do is simplify. Before we get to the positive, let's simplify the negative. Well, ladies and gentlemen, anything raised to an even power is always going to be positive. So that's going to be a positive x to the fourth. Anything or a negative number raised to an odd power is still going to remain negative. Negative times negative now turns this to a positive. This is negative raised to an even power, so now it's positive. Positive times negative now turns you to a negative 8x squared. All right. So now what we want to do is look at the variations of the sign to determine how many zeros, positive or negative, we're going to have. Well, since this is a positive x to the fourth, we know I have to go from positive to negative, which is one variation. And that's it. That's the only time it varies from a positive to a negative or a negative to a positive. Over here, we only have one variation when it goes from a positive to a negative. So therefore, we have one real positive 0. We have one real negative 0. Now, remember, ladies and gentlemen, if that number was greater than, um, greater than 2, remember, it's always the number of variations minus an even number. Right? Just to, so you guys remember, just in case, just to go back to review, let's say I had x to the fifth minus x to the fourth plus x cubed minus x squared plus x minus 5, whatever. You guys would notice that this has one variation, two variations, three variations, four variations, and five variations. So remember, you'd always say 5. So that means it either has 5 or 3 or 2 or, I'm sorry, or 1. OK? If the function looks something like this, you guys can see, obviously, there's only one variation, right? So that's the number of positive zeros. But that's not the rule. The rule doesn't say how many zeros, how many variations, that's the number of zeros. The rule says the number of variations minus an even number. So if I have five variations, it could be 5 or it could be minus an even number. Well, so 5 minus 2 is 3. Five, 3 minus 2 would be 1. So therefore, you have all three of these are possible zeros. Okay, But you can't subtract an even number from 1, right? Because it doesn't make sense to have negative zeros, right? A negative amount of zeros, that doesn't make sense. So what you need to remember is you always count the number of zeros. That's the term of possibilities. But then you have to subtract an even number. Now, let's just go back and do a quick little review as well. So ladies and gentlemen, if we look at the degrees of our function, or the degree of this function, we see our degree is to the fourth power. So what's the maximum number of zeros we can have? Four. So if there's four zeros, right? we know we're going to have one positive, and we know we're going to have one negative. So you have to have two complex zeros. Not zeros. OK? I didn't ask you that, but it's good to remember that and go through it. All right? So 